you said about your your accent like people think you're yeah. foreign and stuff like have you because i mean you're you're multi speaking though like normally yes um have you though ever felt like when you're speaking english that people judge you or yeah like what's what's that experience been like in yeah. water because there's definitely this language divide that people don't really speak about at all like to me the one i don't care like the the first things first is i don't care and that's the reason why i speak this way it's like one the reason why i speak this way and i feel like i don't even need to explain it mm-hmm. to 99% of the people yeah. who listen to music or who understand what i'm trying to do but if you really expect me to make music in english and speak in a maltese english <laughs> accent and you expect me to get anywhere with that is it cuz this is I this have is a, no idea what to say you get what i'm saying i i think i get what you're saying but but um Because, okay, I'm very musically, um, I love hip hop, I love music, but I am uh, musically retarded, essentially. And so, (laughs) is there something maybe about the Maltese accent that that just is, is aesthetically not pleasurable? That is like in when it's being sung or because because it sounds. It sounds annoying to me, yeah. but maybe it's just our perceptions as Maltese people. I don't know what it is. Maybe maybe you have a bit more insight. So, it's a very good question, by the way. I think, one, so, for example, like, the way me and you speak English are very different. Yes. But I feel like the way you speak English for a podcast format works mm-hmm. because it the way you speak your English doesn't necessarily hinder from the conversation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. While I feel like the, and that's the main focus of a, of a podcast, right? I think is the conversations being had. Exactly. While I feel like with regards to music, especially nowadays, in the lane of what I'm trying to do in the lane of everything that I'm doing, music is 30% of 40 percent of what you're doing it doesn't mean you need to have bad music and still make it it's not that but i think on top of having good music the 30 40 percent which is the 30 40 percent it's 70 percent just like i said living vicariously if that's the word right v- vicariously Ooh, vicariously through the artist so and i think it expands into other things as well so one I think that as soon as a Maltese person listens to another Maltese artist and they have the accent, I feel mm-hmm. like one, they already don't take them seriously because we've never had an artist mm-hmm. blow up in any other country which sounded Maltese, which did anything sound a Maltese. So I think there's some sort of, which is sad, mm-hmm. but there's sort of some inner hatred mm-hmm. from ourselves as artists when we hear ourselves you get what i'm saying yes like i said we're always comparing ourselves to other countries we're always growing up you're always being comparing yourself to other countries at least that's what it was like for me i remember being like nine years old and making bionicle videos on my flip on my dad's flip love bionicle (laughs) oh my life um but i remember doing that and i remember watching foreign people do it it was never like this is something that I I realized in Czech, a lot of people in Czech make music in Czech, but it's because it's respected. People listen to music in Czech. Mm-hmm, over there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. In Malta, we don't. It's sad to say, but we don't have music culture. We just don't. Maybe <laughs> no, yeah. Or maybe older generations. Do. Some there are there are some that are very good, like John Malia with with John what Malia was was a savage dude. He was, well, some of his music was amazing. Top respect, like I can't remember what was the uh, band called. Uh, uh, no bling show. No bling show. That's it. That's yeah, it. That's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. He had that that one song, Samuel uh, Lucia. Oh my God! Beautiful, bro. Amazing. L- Amazing. Truly. I think I think Marty's rap is is beautiful as well. And La Pes is really good. Yeah. I think, it, uh, of course, for me, it also taps in into certain things about me wanting to make it bigger than Malta because I think Maltese rap is beautiful. I think Maltese art is beautiful. I think yes. our language is amazing. But at the same time, me growing up, I always wanted to reach a foreign audience and I just knew I couldn't do it with. And there's a hard cap, right? On exactly. Malta. There's 500,000 people yeah. and 
those 500,000 people, a lot of them don't speak Maltese. <laughs> There's and a lot of they, foreigners. And if they do, maybe they're not interested in what you're care. what you're doing. Like it's it's such a tiny tiny market. Exactly. As soon exactly. as you speak English, your market grows exponentially exactly and there's also another thing actually i was listening to i think it was idris elba actually talking about okay. uk rap yeah. and he said at the beginning all the uk rappers yeah. were sounding like americans yeah and then a couple of them made it they they sort of uh, developed the scene yeah. and then that allowed for the the sort of natural uk rap to sort of grow from that exactly. so it takes i think it yet yeah, as you uh, it takes that first couple of people yeah. to do the best version of what everyone else is doing so that then the new people can come exactly. and create the authentic maltese stuff exactly. right i think this is why I've been starting to add like Maltese elements to my music as well now recently is because I don't touch me bro I swear <laughs> like I love I love Malta I love our language I like everything but I, I feel like I'm just again like I, not to sound big headed but something about our accent something about the way we speak in the beginning of my journey, I just knew that wasn't going to work. I just knew. Yeah. I just knew if I spoke like this, it's not going to work. And when you listen to my music, you can see the progression of how I speak my English. And people act like it's the it's the craziest thing in the world that I speak English like this. <laughs> yeah. If you go to Denmark and you hear people speaking in English that go to university and everything, they sound... Uh, I've been to like Copenhagen. Yeah. Everyone over there, when they speak English, they sound American. I've been to, I've met Swedish people. And this is another thing. This is another thing that people don't realize, especially the older generations, even people my age. Yeah. That now, especially with the internet and with TV, yeah. whatever, people are here much more the American accent yeah. than the English accent, yeah. the Italian accent. Yeah. Before, our, our accent was influenced by different things. The younger kids, especially kids like growing up now, like 10, yeah. 12, 13, they sound American, hundred percent American. Bro. You're a lot twenty four. Yeah. You, you grew up I'm, with the internet exactly. now. You don't remember a time really no. without that shit. Maybe he's fuck seven years old. Exactly. No, but at the <laughs> same, you get me. It's like you, you grow up, and to me, my accent is literally like not the biggest deal. Like when I'm speaking to Maltese people, I don't speak like this uh -huh. because I'm not forcing it all the time. But when I'm speaking to foreign people, this comes on aut automatically, like mm -hmm. you, or when I'm on podcasts or. Like, this is how I represent myself. Yeah. If you don't like it, just don't listen to me at the end of the day. But I really don't get this thing where it's like, stop trying to act American. Oh, stop. But this, this, not, this language thing in Malta is weird though. Like, cause I've, I've had it from all sides. Yeah. Cause I went to, I went to a school where most people spoke Maltese, but I spoke English. My, but my family is Maltese speaking. Yeah. They just decided from a young age to speak to us in English yeah. just because they thought it would be more important. And thank fucking God they did because that was one of the most useful things my parents ever did for me. And so I remember being straight up bullied and just judged for it and all this yeah. stuff. Right. And. Uh, you, I've definitely heard it from a lot of English speaking people that kind of pressure and that societal judgment yeah. about them not speaking Maltese as good as they could or or just the fact that they speak English as a first language in general. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. then I've also been around those English speaking people that judge the Hamali, you know, chavs that yeah. speak Maltese. Exactly. And I'm just like, who gives a fuck? Yeah. Just speak whatever you want to speak. Language, it's <laughs> just language. It's like, it's one thing. I get it. If, if, it, if I was Maltese, right? And I'm, maybe I'm going to sound like a hypocrite when mm -hmm. I say this now, but I, maybe you understand what yeah. I'm saying. If I was Maltese and I'm trying to sound English, Maybe that would be weird. Mm -hmm, English mm -hmm. saying like from the UK, right? Right, right, right. Because right. our influence on YouTube, television, everything we watch, everything we listen mm -hmm. to, ninety nine percent of it is like American English. Right, right, right. So that's mean. where you get your influence. When you're growing up watching Disney Channel, you're looking at American people speaking American English. If it was me trying to sound like I'm from the UK and growing up all my life, I've never 
we don't have UK television. We don't. Right. You get me? We well, have to specifically look for. Yeah, it. we had we had much more when yeah, when I was day, back in sure. the day. Yeah. And in fact, my accent has also changed over time. Yeah. It has gotten much more Americanized. Like exactly. certain things that I say have are much more American sounding. Yeah. Like even even just say, certain sayings man, that have entered the culture. No cap, fucking w- whatever. You know. I remember back in the day, I used to say, I used to say. Uh, I used to say this thing that, of course, like a lot of like English people say it, but it was um, when it pops in my head, I'll let you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there are certain things you grow up because they're used in culture. You just start using and using them now. I, like I said, to me, I grew up constantly watching American TV. Constantly, like everything was American for me. So that's gonna be the influence. That's what gave me the push to as well. When I was young, when I was like thirteen years old, I had zero friends. All I used to do was make friends on Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 2. <laughs> and I used to play with these foreign clans like uh, abroad. So from the age of 13 to like 16, 17, my only friends are American kids playing Modern Warfare 2 with me. This is how I grew up speaking. This is how I started to be comfortable, how I fit in with these people. So of course. You don't like it, don't listen. Exactly. To it.